Hi, my name is Rohit and today we'll be looking at uh, chapter 101, which is called Polymer 101. In this chapter, we'll learn about uh, how to prep a HTML project to use Polymer using Bower and how to create your own custom web component using Polymer and how to reuse another web component inside your web components. Finally, we'll see how to use our web component which we created inside a HTML page. So let's get started. So this is our directory where we are in chapter 01 and uh, I'm using WebStorm for demonstrating things over here. So first thing first, let's initialize Bower. So Bower is a tool which is used for dependency management uh, of JavaScript libraries. Uh, it's going to ask us a question about what kind of uh, component are we trying to create, yeah, Bower component. So we're just going to say it's a default component. And this is the description for that. There's no main file. Let's just go ahead. So here it's Polymer and Rip components uh, as our keywords. The rest everything is just fine. So it gives us a file uh, like this. And I'll show you that file inside our WebStorm. So very simple file. Actually, the most important portions are these. Uh, now we what you want what you want to do next is uh, introduce a dependency where we are telling power hey we need a polymer uh, library inside this so what we're going to do is we're going to say power install uh, polymer and polymer save so when you say save that dependency is actually also injected inside our files so next time all we have to do is power uh, update and this directory gets created so i'm not going to cover bower basics over here assuming you guys know about it so this is what we get over here so what we're going to do next is so far we have covered how to prep a project using power next thing we're going to do is how to create our own web component using polymer so for that what we're going to do is we're going to create a directory called as elements we're going to place our elements and in that, I'm going to create a HTML file called as my element. Remember, it's important that you name your elements, your custom components uh, with a hyphen. It acts like a namespace, so there is no overridden. Uh, you don't overwrite somebody else's uh, web components by mistake. Yeah. So that's what we're going to follow. So in this case, we're going to just go with my elements. All right, let's remove all these things. We're going to put a link. We're going to say the relation of the link is import. And we're gonna go and pick up our Polymer framework. Now this is called as HTML import. This is a core component of web components. This way we are telling that, hey, import the entire library, web component library of Polymer. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define our Polymer element. And to do that, we say Polymer element name is equal to in this case, the name is my element. Again, the hyphen is important over here to establish a namespace. We're going to say we're not going to use any script because this is the first example. So we have to specify that we're not going to use any script. Next thing is whatever you want to, be dis to display in your Polymer element should go in something called as a template. A template is nothing but HTML template. If you have worked with uh, templating libraries like Mustache or um, Underscore, uh, the concept is similar but polymer provides templating library uh, within itself and template is also becoming one of the key feature of html5 development the components specs so this is my element just put it in the nice bold and this is a shadow dom this is an interesting concept. Whatever you put inside the template will be a shadow DOM. Uh, you will not be able to see the shadow DOM unless you prep the browser to do so. So it's like the video tag, which was the, which recently came into picture. Uh, but if you use in Chrome and you enable uh, the shadow DOM, then you can see what HTML elements are going inside the video component. 
So going further, this is what we did. We have created our first web component using Polymer. It's a very simple web component, doesn't provide us much, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add another web component to this, which is a ready-made web component. For that, we're gonna go back to our command prompt. We're gonna say power install Polymer for Ajax. This is a web component already provided by Polymer. We can again say save. So if we say that, Abar puts a dependency on both of them and you get core Ajax. And this is the core Ajax web component, HTML. Now in order to use that, like we imported the Polymer web component, we'll be importing uh, the core Ajax web component and here it is. The good thing about this web component, it's very simple to use. Uh, all you say is core Ajax. I want to do uh, HTTP get on a set uh, URL, which could be web service. In this case, we're gonna create a JSON file. We're gonna say we want to automatically fetch it without waiting when this component loads up. And we're gonna say we're gonna capture the response in something called as uh, data. That's our keyword when we're talking about this thing. Now the good thing about this is, um, if, we write, if a web services is uh, giving a response like this, for example, it's a name and a test. That's our data. So this entire object is cached in the data. It's put in the data. So what we can do is we can say div data dot name. Now you're wondering what this is. This is called as data mining. This is another important aspect of web components. What it enables you to do is uh, bind, uh, enable two-way binding. So uh, this is the object which is containing data, but it is also mapped to a HTML element. So it the way it works is uh, if you point it to an input element and you change the data, this data will change. If you change the data in JavaScript, uh, the actual data and the input element will also change. So in this case, all we're trying to say is, hey, core Ajax, go and fetch data and put it in the data. And in this case, we are saying, hey, Dave, you're supposed to just display the name you know, of that particular thing, which is gonna be the test. So that's our web component in which we have also reused another web component. Now we're gonna use our component actual HTML page. Now doing so is very simple and straightforward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just create a HTML page, you know, say chapter 01. And in this case, we'll use a script because we need some JavaScript to load our web components. So we're gonna say power web components. Now this has changed recently. It was earlier polymer hyphen plat slash platform or JS. Now it's gonna be Web components. There's a reason behind that because it is trying to abstract all the polyfills in one place. These will be becoming features of uh, actual web components and HTML5 specs very soon. So now what you're going to do is you're going to say link rel import and we are going to do import of our elements. So you're going to import our my element over here and that. So we have prepped our project uh, HTML file to use web components library. And now we are able to import a web component. And using a web component can, can't be any more simpler than this. Now let's see if this actually works. So it actually works. This is my element, this is shadow DOM. That comes from this guy. This guy kicks in. It has a response data, and we're just trying to say data.json, which is this. So that way, we had done our first assignment, our first project of Polymer. Thank you so much.